Hello and welcome to the Z Hut. Today we're going to take a look at how you can build your very own Bluetooth controlled fart machine. Now this could also be set up to use a couple other ways. Um, you could set it up to do a screaming sound so you could like hide it behind the toilet and when somebody's in the bathroom using it push the, the button on your smartphone or tablet. I've got it right here and I'll show you it working. And I've got two different fart noises on there. And when you push the button it goes ahead and cycles through. Well, you could put uh, 20 different things on there and every time you push the button it'll go through to the next one. Now I also added, and this is optional, this is a test button so you can manually trigger it without using a Bluetooth device to make sure everything's working right. But another thing that I also did with this is I put some cat noises on there, some growls and hisses, and I put it in a cardboard box and set it on the floor, and all three of my cats just went nuts. They uh, attacked that box like you wouldn't believe. But All right, what we'll do here is um, we'll go over and take a look at how the circuit's put together. Then we'll go over to MIT App Inventor, and I'll show you how to put the app together. And then after that, we'll go over to the Arduino IDE, and I'll show you the simple sketch we have hooked up to use this. All right, well, first, of course, we've got our Bluetooth device. This is an HC06. And um, when I trigger it from the app, you can hear there's a little kind of like a feedback hum. It's in there. I found if I moved the HC06 a few inches away from this, the um, MP3 player that we got here and the LM386 amplifier, that went away. But uh, for the tutorial, it was a lot easier to set it up, just have it plugged into the board. But what I'm going to finally do is I'm going to put this on one of them half boards that's half the size of this, and then run the, uh, the Bluetooth device to the outside of the box and tape it on and that'll all fit in here and then I just have to plug my power into the side and probably put some velcro or something to hold it on there and then you could tape it up underneath the chair or velcro it up under a chair or however you wanted to do it. So then next of course we're using a logic level converter running between the, uh, the um, Arduino board and the HC06 because the Arduino is 5 volt logic and of course the HC06 or HC05 will work as well but they are both 3.3 volt logic and just remember you have to actually power the board from 5 volts but the logic the the TX and RX is 3.3 volt and next we have our little MP3 player and this is a DF player mini these only cost a couple dollars I think it was under three dollars if I remember right and we have this there's two ways to hook it up you can hook it up to be controlled by the Arduino board serial communication but I didn't need to do that because you can also set this up as a standalone mp3 player and by using pin 11 on the DF player mini which is the IO2 pin if you do a short press it triggers it. If you do a long press, it'll increase the volume. But I didn't didn't put anything in. It's just automatically set up where it'll always be on high volume. And then from that, I got it to run to the Arduino. I do believe it's digital pin six. And when you set this up, you got to remember the the I/O two pin is going to be high on here. So you want to set the Arduino sketch when it starts up to make it high. And then when you want to trigger this, you trigger the pin to go low. And I have it set for like 100 milliseconds or 200, somewhere in there, a real quick, short burst, and that triggers it. Then we don't have to set it up to communicate serial. And um, beans, we are already using a uh, Bluetooth device communicating that way. We would probably have to use um, that serial software that allows you to use other pens. All right. Um, and, of course, we've got the LM386. And I have this set up super basic. Um, the, I wasn't too concerned about the audio quality, so I set it up with a bare minimum setup. And the reason I put the amplifier on there, you could hear this just running off the MP3 player, 
but it wasn't quite loud enough. If somebody was talking or a TV was on, you probably wouldn't have heard the sound effect that you're going to be playing when you trigger it. So it's real easy to set this up. And um, there will be a full schematic on this on the website. Just look in the description below and you'll find a link to the website. And as well, I'll have the Arduino uh, sketch and uh, the app if you don't want to make your own. I'll actually probably just put the AIA file on there so that you can modify it yourself to because I have no text on the button. You might want to put text in there. But otherwise we will go over how that works here and actually that's what we will do next. Um, the only other thing I think I forgot to mention is this um, DF Player Mini uses your micro SD cards. That would be the same thing that you'd use in your cell phone or your tablet. And then you just need one of these little adapters that you plug it into so you can put it into your computer to load the, uh, the MP3 on it. Otherwise you could put it in your cell phone and load the MP3 on it as well. I'm sure that would work. I just use my computer. Otherwise, I think that's it. Um, like I said, you can find the schematic for this on the website. So. What I will do is fire up the computer and bring up MIT App Inventor 2 and we'll go over the, um, the app, how you can build your own or to modify mine. So I'll see you there in just a moment. Okay, I have MIT App Inventor 2 opened up here. So let's just get right into this. Oh, and also, um, if you've never used this before, this is free software. Um, I will put a link on the website to where to go. Um, this is either browser-based or if you want to run a virtual server setup, there is places you can download the, uh, the program from and you can run it offline as well. I generally do run mine offline so that... Uh, it seems to work a little quicker. I'm not having to run everything back and forth through the internet. All right, so like I said, let's just get right into it. Well, first thing we have here, this is our display, what the screen will look like. And I have a connect button here. And that's all you gotta do is just drag a button in and change the text over here. Where's that at? Oh, I suppose it would help to click on it, wouldn't it? And right here under text, you can change the text. You can also change the text color. Say you wanted to make it red. And you can also make it bold or italic as well. I left the height and width automatic. And then you can also adjust the font size. So say you wanted it bigger. And then it automatically adjusts the height and width of the button. And uh, you can also change the shape of it and stuff too, but it's just a connect button, so I didn't do anything fancy with that. Then next, I'll show the hidden components, because the way I have this set up is after the app connects to the HCL6 or HCL5 Bluetooth device, the connect button disappears, and this button shows up. And this one here, I set that up. That one is automatic height and width. Or no, wait, that one actually did put a size on. Sorry about that. I did it 50 by 150. And then I made it oval shaped. And if you put the text in there, make sure you adjust the font size. So, it, Oh, excuse me, so it fits in there correctly. But I chose just to leave it blank. So if I had it sitting on the table and pressed it, nobody would know what I was doing. And I'll also get to that in the app. You could set up a delay so when you press it, it's not triggered instantly because they somebody might catch on to that right away. You could say add like a 20 second delay after you push it that the fart machine goes off. Otherwise, the only other thing we have is down here in connectivity, you'll need to drag in a Bluetooth client. Not the server, you want the Bluetooth client. You just drag one of them in. As you can see, I already have it here. You just drag it in anywhere on the screen and it'll automatically pop up down here. All right, well, let's go over to the blocks and I'll show you how this works. All right, 
So we have our list picker, and that's the connect button. So when we click that, it uh, brings up what Bluetooth devices are available and shows their names. Then after you pick which one that you're connecting to, it goes through and sets that selection to the Bluetooth client and sets it. Then we have in the if statement here, it checks if the Bluetooth did successfully connect, it turns that list picker connect button to false and it sets the button number one, the one that activates the fart machine to true. Now if the Bluetooth does not connect, this if statement won't happen and you'll be able just to hit connect again on the screen. Now you could add a disconnect button if you wanted to, but for this app I didn't really see a point in it. Um, if you do need to reconnect for some reason, just exit out of the app and restart it. You also, if you wanted to set this up to auto connect, there is a way to do that and I have a video, you can find that on my channel. Or I'll also put a link to that. Uh, if I remember, I'll put it in the description below, but I will definitely make sure I put it on the website. And after that, we're connected. All we have here is when button one is clicked, it sends a two byte number to the Arduino. And I just picked 1000. That was just a nice, easy round number. And that's all there is to it. So when the Arduino receives that two byte number of 1000, it triggers the fart machine. All right. Um, I think we covered everything here on MIT App Inventor. And I will have a copy of the blocks diagram here on the website as well. And like I said, if you want to set this up to auto connect, which actually is not very difficult, I have a good video I just did about a week ago on how to do that. And you can either find it in my channel or just go to the website. And if I do remember, I will put a link to it in the description below. But just in case I forget, I will definitely have it on the website. All right, well, I'm going to open up the Arduino IDE, and we'll go over the sketch for this. So I'll see you there in just a moment. All right, I have the Arduino IDE opened up here. <clears throat> and as you can see, this is a pretty, pretty, fairly simple sketch. There is not too much to it. So uh, let's just get right into it and go over it. Well, first of all, we're defining the, the play pin, and that's pin six, and that's the pin that we're hooked to the IO, was it the OI or I, it was the IO two pin on the, uh, the MP3 player, and we're setting that to pin six. If you wanted to use a different digital pin, you, you, you can do that without a problem. Just remember to change that on here to whatever pin that you decide to use. Um, next, we're getting into the void setup, and we're just setting the, the play as an output. And then we're writing it high, because like I said at the beginning of the video, the MP3 player, that pin that triggers it to play the sound, is high. And when you change it to low, that's what triggers it. So we want it to start out being high. And then, of course, next we're going to start our serial, and we're running 9600. Now down to the void loop, if serial dot available is greater than or equal to 2, we go through, and this is a little formula. I, like I said when we were talking about the MIT App Inventor app, we're sending the 2-byte number. Now Arduino receives in 1-byte numbers. Now the reason I use 2-byte numbers, and I just stick with them, is because most of my apps where I'm using Bluetooth, I'm using lots of different values. And it's just a lot easier working with a 2-byte number instead of a 1. And you just got to include this little formula right here. Don't change anything. Just that part of it right there. You got to include that, and it just runs this little mathematical formula that reads the both them numbers in one byte at a time, then combines them to make the two byte number. So the next we're checking if the value, which we're setting right there by using that formula, equals a thousand. So if you click the button on the the app, it'll send that thousand, and it goes through and digital writes the play, which is pin six, to low. Then it delays for 100 milliseconds, and then it sets it back to high. Now, like I said, you could add a delay in here if you didn't want it to go off right the instant you pushed it. 
So to do that, and I'll show you real quick, you just go right here and put delay. And let's say you wanted to put a 10 second delay in there. And remember to put it in milliseconds. There, that's all you'd have to do. So when it got that, when you push the button, it would take 10 seconds and then the fart machine would go off. If you wanted to make it um, 20 seconds, just put in 20. That's all there is to it and that's the end of the sketch. That is how simple this is. This actually would be a really good beginner's project if um, you just started working with the Arduino microcontrollers um, and you have a little bit of experience. Um, I don't think this would be something you'd want to try as your first project, but it still would be good for a beginner because everything is pretty simple. There's not a whole lot to it. All right, uh, like I said before, there's a link in the description below and you'll find all this information on the website as well. Um, if you found the information useful, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And remember to subscribe because I do videos several every week. Um, lots of them to do with Arduinos, microcontrollers, um, a little bit of photography stuff. Not too often, but a little bit. And once in a super great while, if I get a new piece of equipment for my YouTube channel, I will do a review on it. So, I would like to thank you for joining us here at the Z-Hunt today. I hope you have a great day, and remember, have fun building.